on perfect wisdom with the divisions of the Abishamaya Lamkara. Translated by Edward Conzay, 1904-1979. University of California Press Berkeley, Los Angeles, London. Chapter 56 Even Training The growth which is essentially an increasing endowment with distinguished and superior wholesome roots. Sacra, Chief of Gods. Deep, O Lord, is this perfection of wisdom, hard to see, hard to understand, inaccessible to reasoning and discursive thought, too. It is subtle, delicate, to be felt only by the learned and discerning, on account of its absolute isolatedness. Not will those beings be endowed with a puny wholesome root who will hear this perfection of wisdom. Learn it, bear it in mind, preach and study it, and will progress to its thusness and give no occasion to any other mental dharmas until they know full enlightenment. The Lord. So it is, Kausika, so it is. What do you think, Kausika, if all the beings of Jambudvipa were endowed with the ten ways of wholesome action, the four trances too, the five supernologers, and if a son or daughter of good family were to learn this deep perfection of wisdom, bear it in mind, preach and study it, and after that he would progress to its thusness, then his wholesome root would be immeasurably superior to that of the former wholesome root. Thereupon a monk said to Sakra, chief of gods, this son or daughter of good family who will learn this deep perfection of wisdom with undistracted thought. Bear it in mind. Preach and study it. Who will progress to its thusness and who will not give any occasion to other mental dharmas until he will know full enlightenment. Has surpassed all those beings of Jambudvipa who were endowed with the ten ways of wholesome action, the four trances too. The five supernologers. Sakra. The Bodhisattva, O monk, who has raised even a single thought to enlightenment has surpassed all those beings of Jambudvipa who are endowed with the ten ways of wholesome action, with the four trances, the four unlimited, the four formless attainments, and the five supernologers. How much more so if he will learn this deep perfection of wisdom, bear it in mind and study it, and thereafter will progress to its thusness. He will surpass the world with its gods, men and asuras, he will come to surpass it. And he will in addition come to surpass all the stream winners too. Pratayika Buddhas. And also those bodhisattvas who, without skill in means and perfect wisdom, course in the perfection of giving, to the perfection of meditation. But those bodhisattvas who course in the perfection of wisdom as it has been explained, then the world with its gods, men and asuhuras cannot surpass. The bodhisattva who courses in the perfection of wisdom as it has been explained and complies with it. He works for the non-interruption of the lineage of the knowledge of all modes, he does not keep aloof from the Tathagatas. He will, when he progresses thus, not keep aloof from the Tathagatas. He will, when he progresses thus, not turn back on the terrace of enlightenment, for he wants to extricate beings from the mud of the defilements into which they have sunk. When he thus trains, he trains in the training of a bodhisattva, and not that of a disciple or pratayika Buddha. The growth which by its own being induces the whole multitude of the gods to approach the bodhisattva. When he thus trains, the four great kings will think of approaching him, and, having approached him, they will say to him, Quickly train yourself, great man, nimbly train yourself. Here are the four begging fowls which the former Tathagat has received, and which you also shall receive when you will be seated on the terrace of enlightenment, after you have known full enlightenment. And also the divinities belonging to the four great kings will think of approaching the Bodhisattva who thus trains in perfect wisdom. And not only they, but also the gods of the thirty-three, the Deva kings headed by Suyama, the Devas kings headed by Samtusita, the Deva kings heads by Nermito who magically create their own enjoyments. Those who control the enjoyments magically created by others. Rama Sahampati and the gods connected with him. The shining gods. The altogether lovely gods. Those who have a great fruition, the lowest of the five gods of the pure abode, the Atapa gods, are the gods who are good to see, the gods who are good to behold, the gods of the pure abode. The Tathagatas will constantly bring to mind the Bodhisattva who courses in this deep perfection of wisdom as it has been explained.
when he thus courses in this deep perfection of wisdom as it has been explained. Then all the worldly ills which may befall his body as the result of hostile influences from the outside will never befall his body or assail it. These, O oh monk, will be the qualities which a bodhisattva who courses in this deep perfection of wisdom gains in this very life. All the illnesses that there are, which may befall him, such as eye disease, ear, nose, and tongue diseases, bodily illness, mental illness, they all cannot arise in his body or assail it. These qualities belonging to this very life should be expected of the bodhisattva who courses in this deep perfection of wisdom. The growth which in its own form is the ability to overcome all maras. Thereupon it occurred to the Ven. Ananda. Does this Sakra, chief of gods, expound by his own insight the perfection of wisdom and its virtues and advantages or by the Buddha's might? Sakra read his thoughts, and said to the Ven. Ananda. As the Buddha's might should this be known when I expound the perfection of wisdom and its virtues and advantages? The Lord. So it is, Ananda, so it is. It is through the Tathagata's might, it is through his sustaining power, that Sakra, chief of gods, expounds the perfection of wisdom, and its virtues and advantages. At the time when, Ananda, a bodhisattva trains in perfect wisdom, make endeavors about it and develops it, all. The evil Maras in the great Trikliacosm are in a state of uncertainty, will this Bodhisattva realize the reality limit and then reach the fruit of a stream winner, too? Pratayika Buddhahood, or will he know full enlightenment? Moreover, at the time when the Bodhisattva becomes one who is not without perfect wisdom, Mara, the evil one, is pierced by the dart of sorrow. Moreover, the evil Maras will let loose a shower of meteors so as to generate fear in him, to cow him, to make his hairs stand on end, to discompose his mind, to cause one thought at least to distract it away from attentions to the knowledge of all modes. Ananda. Does then, O Lord, Mara, the evil one, attempt to hurt all bodhisattvas? The Lord. No, he does not. Ananda. What kind of persons does he then try to hurt? The Lord. Mara attempts to hurt those bodhisattvas who, when this deep perfection of wisdom was being taught in the past have had no firm belief in it. And also those who have been seized by uncertainties about this deep perfection of wisdom, and who thought that, perhaps this perfection of wisdom is so, perhaps not. And also bodhisattvas who lack the good spiritual friend and who, not seeing him, do not hear this deep perfection of wisdom, do not cognize it, and in consequence do not progress to its thusness, and do not know how to develop it. And Mara also has a chance with a bodhisattva who, being without perfect wisdom, takes hold of what is not the true Dharma. Moreover, when a bodhisattva, being without perfect wisdom, speaks in praise of what is not the true Dharma, then it occurs to Mara, the evil one. One who speaks in praise of what is not the true Dharma, he is my adherent and in him I have found an advocate thirteen among many who belong to the Bodhisattva vehicle. He will fulfill my intention, which is that those who belong to the Bodhisattva vehicle should stand on either of two levels, that of a disciple or Pratayika Buddha. What other kind of a Bodhisattva will Mara, the evil one, gain entry to? If a bodhisattva, when this deep perfection of wisdom is being taught, says deep is this perfection of wisdom, what point is there in your listening to it, too? In your studying it? Even I do not get to the bottom of it. How then can you? Then Mara will gain entry to him. Moreover, when a bodhisattva despises other bodhisattvas, and thinks, I course in the perfection of giving, too. In the perfection of wisdom, but you do not. Then, Mara gain entry to him. Moreover, when a bodhisattva fancies and exalts himself, then Mara, the evil one, becomes contented, elated, enraptured, he becomes overjoyed, exultant and jubilant, and can gain entry to him. Moreover, whenever bodhisattva the assumption of a name or clan is proclaimed, then he may regard that as a sufficient reason to look down on other bodhisattvas, however well behaved and lovely in character they may be. He exalts himself and depreciates others. He has not got the qualities which are the attributes, tokens, and signs of irreversible bodhisattvas. Because he has not got them, he gives rise to defilement, exalts himself and depreciates others and says, 
in this bodhisattva vehicle, in this bodhisattva clan you do not make such a good figure as I do. So he will condemn and depreciate those persons belonging to the bodhisattva vehicle. Mara, the evil one, then thinks to himself, My realm will not remain empty, crowded will be the hells, the animal kingdom, the world of Yama, and the range of the pretas. More and more will Mara, the evil one, sustain that bodhisattva, so that he will in due course become a plausible talker. Because of his plausible talk many people will listen to him and believe him, they will imitate what they have seen and heard, and will in consequence not train in thusness. Not seventeen training in thusness, not seventeen progressing in it, they will increase their defilements. Whatever deed they may do with their perverted personality, by body, voice and mind, that will lead them to what is unserviceable, disagreeable, and unpleasant. In consequence the great hells will become crowded, the animal kingdom, the world of Yama, and the range of the Pritas. The realm of Mara will be crowded. When he considers this sequence of events, Mara becomes enraptured, overjoyed, and jubilant. Moreover, if a person belonging to the Bodhisattva vehicle disputes with a son of good family, who belongs to the vehicle of the disciples, and claims to be superior to him, the Mara, the evil one, thinks to himself, Surely, this son of good family will keep far away from the knowledge of all modes and will not come near it. And why? Because these quarrels, fights, battles, and disputes do not lead to the knowledge of all modes but to the hells, to animal births, to the world of Yama. Because they are not the way to the knowledge of all modes. Moreover, if a person belonging to the vehicle of the Bodhisattva's quarrels, fights, battles, and disputes with someone else who likewise belongs to that vehicle, the Mara, the evil one, thinks to himself both these remain far away from the knowledge of all modes. Both these will not know full enlightenment. And why? Because this path, this progress on which the sons of good family have set out leads not to the knowledge of all modes but to the hells, the animal world, the world of Yama. Moreover, if a bodhisattva, who has not had his prediction, cherishes malice for one who has had it, and quarrels, fights, battles, and disputes with him, then he must put on the armor for as many eons as he has produced in himself those evil thoughts, which cause quarreling, fighting, battles, and disputes, unless, of course, he has altogether abandoned the knowledge of all modes. Ananda, is there an escape from the after-effects of these thoughts, or is he definitely condemned to go on putting on the armor for all those eons? The Lord, I have, Ananda, demonstrated a dharma which includes the possibility of escape, for persons of the vehicles of the disciples and Pratyeka Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas. As to the person who belongs to the vehicle of the Bodhisattvas, and who quarrels with someone else who also belongs to it, or disputes with him, insults, or reviles him, if he does not confess his fault, but harbors a latent tendency to hostility, of that person I do not teach the escape from the consequences of his action. Quite definitely that person must go on putting on the armor for all these eons unless, of course, he has altogether abandoned the knowledge of all modes. But if the Bodhisattva confesses his fault, harbors no latent tendency to hostility, affects restraint in the future and reflects, it is indeed a loss to me and not a gain, that I, who ought to remove suffering from all beings, should, when I am spoken, to answer back. That I, who should be to all beings a bridge across the sea of birth and death, should speak unkindly to others and contradict them. This is not how I should act. I should behave like a senseless idiot or a dumb sheep, and nothing should deflect me from this earnest intention. When after having won full enlightenment I should lead those beings to final nirvana, yet nevertheless I bear ill will towards them, should not be angry them. I should not bear ill will towards them, should not be angry with them. Of such a bodhisattva I teach the escape, and Mara, the evil one, cannot gain entry to him. Moreover the bodhisattva should nave no commerce with persons belonging to the disciple vehicle. But if he does, then he should never bear ill will towards anyone, never get angry with anyone. And why? For that is not seemly to me that I should bear ill will towards them or get angry with them. And why? Because when I have known full enlightenment I should liberate them from all ills. Single quote. The growth which has for its own mark the fact that a 
Bodhisattva treats all other bodhisattvas alike, revering him as if they were the teacher himself. Ananda. How then should a bodhisattva behave towards persons who belong to the vehicle of the bodhisattvas? The Lord. As to the teacher himself. And why? For he is my companion, we have both mounted on the same ship, we should both be trained in the same ways and the same things, I. E. In the perfection of giving, too. In the knowledge of all modes. And he should think that, he is to me one who shows me the way to the perfect enlightenment. But if that bodhisattva should dwell in a contaminated dwelling, without attentions associated with the knowledge of all modes, then I should not train therein. But if he should dwell not without attentions associated with the knowledge of all modes, then I also should train therein. When he thus trains the bodhisattva, the great being, becomes one who trains evenly. End chapter 56. Dot. 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 Note. Followers of the bodhisattva vehicle may get more benefit from listening to the sutras actively by reading along with a peaceful voice and walking on a treadmill very slowly to avoid drowsiness, overthinking, mind-driven, anxiety, nervousness, fear to talk, talk too much or too little. Dot. Dot. Keep this in mind. Wishing or dreaming to do the goodness is the first steps of doing good, it does not matter one can do it or not. It is the same for wishing to become a Buddha. Bodhisattvas are those people who vow to gain enlightenment in order to bring about unchanging happiness for all living beings. And again, it does not matter they can do it or not. Wishing or dreaming to do the goodness become stronger, intense then serene faith, by repeating the wish, take it up, bear it in mind, recite, study it, discuss and expound, attend to it wisely.